testing the mic. Hi people, I see some chatting already. Hello everyone. Whoa, already like shifting stuff around. Can you guys hear me okay? Let's see. Okay, I no. Is that sarcasm, Canon? Hello. I've got my mic in my airbrush location. So it sounds like it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna switch over to our stream. So hello, welcome back. It feels like it's been a while since I've been sitting here in front of my booth. Um, things have been kind of crazy because I am now back in graduate school. So I have a full load this semester. I'm commuting pretty much every day this week or every week. And so timing is like a little bit harder, but I think we are good to go for now and see how things go. Um, gosh, I, it's just been so long. I don't even know like <laughs> what there is to catch up on. Um, yes, I see a lot of people are very excited for the spoons, which is why I have them right here. Um, I also have many other spoons ready to go. It's a spoon army, so we'll be painting a lot of these. Um, depending on how many we paint, we might have to prepare more because I have bought so many bulk spoons that are so low quality that I have to like sand them for the paint to stick. And so um, I did a lot of the sand, all of these are sanded, um, but if we need more, we might have to sand more on stream and that would be fun. That's something really kind of, <laughs> low quality but it's got to be done um but yeah so welcome back um i wanted to just spend a few moments to kind of recap where we're at um show you guys what's upcoming and then we can get started um i already did a bunch of that in terms of school i did want to say that we will be fully painting this figure on the stream and going through everything but after that, I'm not sure if I will start another kit until the summer. It just kind of depends on what my school is like. I have a much busier schedule this semester. There's a possibility I may have an opportunity, so we'll find more about that soon. Um, and if so, like this is kind of my side thing, so other things in life will take precedence. So um, just kind of stay tuned with me. It's not final yet, but just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Um, other things, you can see I've kind of slightly changed my stream layout, um, basically since I'm using this music that is non-licensed now, it's just going to be on in the background, so that box kind of in the bottom near my social media is just, I've moved my followers and stuff there if there's notifications, so um, I'm, I'm thinking that I will use that space in the future for maybe listing out what techniques I'm using or what um, materials I'm using at the time because I think that would be beneficial so you know because I get a lot of questions about what do I use like what paint am I using you know what, do I, what am I using to mask and so I think having that um, area might be helpful for that but it's just kind of everything's kind of up in the air we'll do some spring cleaning and figure out how things are going uh, I think that's it in terms of like life updates hopefully you guys have all been well um, I guess we can kind of dig into the color scheme and stuff. So uh, I have generated a color scheme palette. I am not planning to do anything too crazy. It's just going to be based off of the figure because I really like the idea of working with the yellow greens and, you know, some brown tones and just kind of making her more earthy. And it's been a while since I've done yellow green. So let me pull that up on the screen. I actually have the palette. Um, I just eyedroppered everything from the image so let's see uh, paint too quickly. there she is so this is pretty typical of what I do before I paint any figure whether it's an original character that I um, am building for my own self and the color scheme I want or if it's for a client work from a referenced character I always find references of that said character and generate a color palette based on either the official color scheme or maybe the 
just the color scheme that it, some other artist painted that someone likes and so an uh, important thing in color mixing is to try to get as close as you can and so what I like to do ahead of time is eyedroppering um, at the image in question and then kind of trying to mix the colors as, as close as you can or whatever you know if you feel like you want to go off a little bit that's totally fine too um, this one in particular as you can see there's a lot of yellows there are some orange tones in there um, but mostly we're working with like an earthy color scheme and so we've got you know a lot of yellow greens there's a lot of those in there um, the tights colors actually have a little bit of pink in them just to kind of uh, go with the sakura blossoms sorry if my voice is kind of echoing and looking back at the image um, the oranges as well there's there's kind of a mix of oranges a lot of them are yellow tinted um, but there's also just some darker oranges in there so we'll kind of figure out what we want um, and yeah just kind of have some fun uh, she doesn't have a lot of skin tone as you can see so I'm just gonna use I have vials of skin tone I've mixed that are from random projects and sometimes I mix them together and end up with mystery skin so we'll probably just use mystery skin I, sorry I'm like ranting I'm not even reading your guys comments <laughs> Working with the yellow greens is nice. Yeah, that one, I think that it will be an interesting opportunity to do so. Um, I'll bring out my paint in just a sec to show you guys. Um, and then I love the addition of the actual bird. Yeah, and also, thank you <laughs> about the sheet comment. Yeah, this is, I do this in general. I think that adding in like the actual bird tones will be um, fun. And actually, when I eyedroppered and compared them, they're pretty similar. And so, um, the whoopie pie kit on the left it does it is taken in a white background and so that kind of washes out colors but i did find that um you know they they match up relatively the same so and i like the idea of painting it like the real bird <laughs> hi necro clancy yeah thank you uh, i actually have the figure on stakes or i guess alligator clips right now um so i'll show you guys that as well we're not going to paint it obviously we want to make sure we have our colors let me make this a little smaller, um, kind of see where I can put it. Maybe I'll just stick it here for now and, and see. Maybe I'll turn it off later, it'll just kind of depend. Um, so yeah, let me bring out my paints and then we can get started. Oh yeah, first the clips. So you can see everything's on kind of clips right now. This is what we'll be using when we are painting, but it's not yet. <laughs> There will also be some masking on this kit needed and so certain parts like her sleeves will have to paint the kind of beigey flush tones first and then go into that. So um, I have a whole bunch of paints I just kind of threw over here and things that I think might work with this. So I'm just going to show you guys kind of what I have first and then we can get started. I've got all of these. Oh that image is pretty big. I also have all of these. I'm going to turn off this reference just because it's going to be in the way. So yeah, these are all my paints I'm thinking of. Um, a lot of them are kind of similar ranges, some are not. Um, I have a variety of Gaia Notes here and Mr. Color. Oops, sorry, as I block it. So I have a variety of Gaia Notes, Mr. Color. I also have um, this Dispay color. And so I really like this brand. I've been using them more as a substitute because uh, paint's getting a little bit difficult to find here in the US and there's just shortages in general um, And so if you are on the fence about like whether you want to try using another paint brand I so far I recommend this brand. Um, they're mostly pretty thin You need to, th to thin them a little bit But the color vibrancy is super high and they mix really well with everything else. So now Let's see I've seen you work on your whoopie pie kit makes me want to work on mine <laughs> Yeah, you should they're, they're a fun build um, as long as you get the ones you bought off of Booth, because, uh, you know, as I've been ranting over and over, um, I got a kit directly at the festival and it took us quite a bit of prep work to get here. So I, I think that they'll be a good beginner kit for people overall. Well, I'll be the final judge of that after we're done. Um, but yeah, so here are some of the colors we'll maybe be working with today. Um, I don't expect to finish all of the spoon colors and tests today, but we'll get as far as we can and then we'll see. Might need to break it up and do another session or two. Okay, um, one other thing that I like to have on hand before 
is obviously some paper because we want to be writing down our mixture so we can recreate it later. Um, that's another big thing that I like to do is make sure that um, I kind of have an idea of what I want to do and write it down because then that way you can get close so you can alter it later depending on it. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, before that, let me read some comments. I still haven't done a kit, but I have no idea where to start. Well, you're in the right place. Whoopie pie kits seem to be pretty popular among beginners, and I have many tutorials available on my website and through the streets. So <laughs> feel free to ask any questions if at any point, you know, you have a question about something and I'm happy to help you. Although I, hopefully you got some kits that were in better shape than mine because the ones that uh, whoopie pie cast unfortunately mine were not in the greatest of shape and the booth ones are in excellent shape so just good luck <laughs> no i can't say because it always depends on you know what um what kit you get you know it it just kind of varies all right so let's get started um what i think i'm gonna do first is try to mix those kind of beigey tones so bringing this image up again you can see she has kind of a white um, front outfit part and her the edges of her sleeves they are also that color so i am going to try to mix that what i also tend to do is bring up um, the colors on my phone but now that i think about it i won't be able to see the chat for you guys <laughs> if i do that so Hmm. Okay, we'll have to work with it. Let me pull some other stuff. Um, dang. Oh my gosh, 120 of paints. That's a big order. That was a huge order. And hopefully your kit's in good condition, follow the line. Either way, they're cute kits. Whoops, sorry. They're worth the work, but um, it's always nice when it's an easier cast, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, thinking about this, I might have to just switch back and forth between, oh, did I just shut off my, no, I didn't, I just immediately stopped. Might have to shut off my Twitch here and there and look at my phone to do this. Cause I do like to look at my phone to, to mix the colors. I think I can do that. I think it's still loading. Cause I see your comment, Canon. Got the majority of clear the metallic. Those are fun. All right, anyway, we'll just go for it and see what happens. So um, I'm gonna mix paints randomly. Some of it will be fun, some of it won't be fun. We'll see what happens. I'll try to explain things as we're going through um, so you guys can understand what I'm doing. So I'm looking at the beige color now, or at least the color on her shirt. Um, and it actually looks more like a, a flesh tone to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white because it's pretty light and I have a bunch of paints here. I'm gonna try maybe the Gaia Notes Flesh Orange first. It also looks like there might be a hint of coolness in here. Actually, let's move this. It looks a little bit closer to this, so. Um, I see a comment, can I paint Mr. Color or Gaia over Tamiya? Um, Tamiya is a unique case, so they are um, kind of synthetic lacquers. They have their own thinner um, type and they thin with isopropyl alcohol rather than lacquer thinner. And so I normally what we advise is that lacquer is the base and then you would paint Tamiya on top of the lacquer, on top of the Mr. Color or Gaia. If your Tommy layer is fully cured, you might be able to get away with it, but I wouldn't like saturate the piece with the Mr. Color or the Gaia Notes paint. Um, when we're airbrushing layers, typically they go on pretty thin, and so you could, and I have, but conventionally, we don't really like recommend that to new newbies. Yeah, exactly, it's a solvent acrylic. Technically, like lacquers are also acrylic, pigments in lacquer solvent um 
And Tamiya it sends not in lacquer. It sends in isopropyl alcohol, Tamiya thinner, um, etc. So the, the solvents there are different and that's what makes the compatibility issues. I also realized that um, I picked up my wrong white paint. So let me grab that real quick. Yeah, see as Canon says, and as I've just said, painting lacquer over acrylic is typically, painting lacquer solvent over an acrylic, like, oh my God, it's like a conventional naming problem. So we have acrylic pigments in lacquer solvent, and we have acrylic pigments in like the Tamiya solvent, which is their weird, unique brand mixture um, that thins not in lacquer solvent. And so chemically, like they are incompatible, and that's why if you paint, the lacquer paints in lacquer solvent, acrylic paints and lacquer solvent over those, that's where you get the issues. I hope that makes sense. Like the, the English naming of it is kind of tricky and doesn't make much sense. But in the end, what you want to be thinking about is like solvents. So try to make sure that you are working in those. Let's see, could you seal the Tommy in with a varnish and then paint over it? Um, what I have done is sealed the Tamiya paint with a lacquer top coat and then gone over that with lacquer. But again, you gotta make sure things are cured. Um, you wanna make sure that, you know, you're not getting issues where like paint eats, quote unquote eats another layer um, because that's what happens. Lacquer is the strongest, hottest layer or type of paint. And so it, it will destroy other paints if it gets the chance to. Um, again, it just kind of depends on your top coat, on your um, cure time, etc. So, and don't think anything's like set in stone, but there are things you want to consider when you're painting. And when we are talking about beginners starting out, I do not recommend that they paint over. Like you want to go lacquer as your base and then enamel as your next one and then acrylic. But like Tamiya, Vallejo, those types, those are the ones that are considered the weakest. I feel like I'm talking a lot and not doing a lot of paint mixing, but <laughs> no, no worries here. Um, I'll try to multitask. So I'm going to start out with one dropper of white. That's kind of typical of what I do. And then go into that with other colors. So let's see. Uh, we're working on base cream, I guess. Uh, one dropper of white. Sometimes I do half a dropper. It just depends on the intensity of the color. The more white you add, the paler your colors are gonna be. So the less um, vibrant, less saturated. Okay, I'm shaking up this color now. I have a Mr. Color CK4. Um, it's basically called Wood Pillar. Let's see. This is Wood Pillar and it looks like it might work, but I'm not sure, so. What we're going for is a kind of desaturated orange. So let's take, oh, this is a very thick one too. Let's see if I can grab a little more. Okay, let's do one drop first. Two drops. And it's really thick. Let's see. Might have to mix this up a bit. So I keep a bunch of toothpicks ready just for this type of situation. I realize the lighting is kind of probably off here too. We're working on the opposite side. So I'll try to keep that in mind. So right now we're like here and we need to be a lot darker. So um, let's see, could be this too. Let's try another two, three, four, five drops. Sorry about the... Really all of my paint mixing is just trial and error. That's really all I do. So trying to eyeball colors, make sure that they're good, um, adjust them as needed, etc. I might have added too much white here. That's what I'm noticing. So I'm going to set this aside and use half the white instead and see if that works a little better. OK, 
Let me move it for you. There we go. That way you guys can actually see. Okay. I also go through a lot of these little eyedroppers, at least in the initial stages. Okay, let's try that again. So, let's do three drops of this and see with half the um, amount. Okay, I gotta hold this with my left. I'm left handed, and so. It's a little hard for me to show you guys, but okay. Another thing to keep in mind when you're spraying is that your colors can come out a lot more intense than what's in your cup. They're generally pretty close, but the more layers you put on, the thicker it's gonna go on and the darker the color will be. So don't guarantee whatever's in your cup is the right color. I'm gonna try spraying this and see what it it's like and then we'll go from there so this was half dropper white and three drops ck4 it should be really quick so i'm not even going to turn on my booth if we have like a bunch of colors we have to do then i will um turn on my booth but i see no reason to right now okay so just gonna test this it should be clean already so Okay. Yep, and so I just pour a little bit in there and hopefully you guys can see that okay. This will probably be the shading color just because it's already so dark. I might actually bring that one back, the one that we were working on with the, the one dropper of white. Let's see how that looks. I think I will do that after this. pleasant color. It's kind of like a soft orange. I know the lighting's kind of weird here, but um, it's a really nice soft orange in, in person. Al it's almost a flesh tone, but it's a little bit too orange to, to be a flesh tone. Um, so I'll mark this as like, I like. And then let's go back and spray that one that was the, the one dropper of white. And see we'll go through a lot of spoons in this process okay so we also had a one dropper white and i think it had three drops i'll have to check <laughs> what is meh <laughs> uh, let's see well yeah i do have many many spoons i have a thousand so we'll see. Okay. Do that again. Whoops. Shook that and a little spilled out. Poured that cup too full. around here so we don't have to keep everything too clean yet okay 
Well, this one is significantly lighter um, by definitely at least one or two steps. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this color here is a lot more intense. I wonder if I can bring this light over. Probably not. But that helps a little bit. Yeah, so this color is a little bit lighter. I don't know if this is exactly what I want. And now that I look at it, where am I even getting this color hexa image here? It could be a good shading color. It's definitely not anywhere in the range of what I'm looking for. And now I'm wondering why I eyedroppered this. <laughs> it was like in my um, bookmarks. Okay, we need to go a lot, lot lighter, obviously. So I'm gonna set these aside. Um, let's see. light gray orange okay oh I see okay let's go way lighter we'll do one two three need a whole dropper of white and so I recommend buying lots of white if you have the opportunity to do so you go through quite a lot when you're mixing, so. Okay. Put that back. I try to replace the lid every time as well, just because you never know when you're gonna knock something over. Okay. Let's do... I'm gonna switch gears actually. And I'm gonna use one drop of the cocoa. So I have the CB10, it's cocoa brown. Um, this is kind of a weird guy in notes color, but it makes a really nice chocolatey brown. And we don't need a lot here. So I might even just take a toothpick and do a drop that way. I might be heading in the wrong direction here too, but. That's what mixing colors is all about. And it's fun just to spray. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's more red, red toned. More brown for sure. No, this looks a little too dark. You can see it's more cocoa-y. So I'm gonna set this one aside. And I will ignore that. Let's see, uh, EX White is pretty expensive. Oh yeah, I don't know how much it is now, but the bottles are, are typically quite a bit. But they do last me a long time. So, you know, in that regard, they're worth it. It's worth it to buy the bulk um, of those. Yeah, as you can see, I go through a lot because I, there are many attempts to get to the point where I feel like I like the color. So if you feel like you're not doing well or not mixing colors right, don't worry. It's really hard to eyeball things. Sometimes I'm really good at it. Other times I have bad days and I'm totally off. And so I'm going to do my original plan here and I'm going to Try this notes flesh orange. Hmm. Probably just yeah, one toothpick is fine. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay, let me spray that. That might be what I need. I should have just trusted my gut. One dropper away. And one TP drop. See, this is 054. So let's spray this one. You can see it's very, very almost white, but there's a little bit of cream in there. And that's 
mainly what I'm going for here. We can do all the shading and everything later. Oops, I almost turned my boot on. Okay. I even said that too. I was like, I need to use the flesh, and then I did it. So. I doubt this is even picking up. yellow tint to it when compared. It's really subtle, but there's def it's more like a very eggshell white, um, and that's more what I wanted to go for. So I think that's fine. We'll stick with that color for now. What we do need to do is a slight shading color on it, which, oh man, I recall this now. I'm going to reference my super secret book because I just painted this color. Oh, actually, it's not even in my book yet. It's on my super secret paper, uh, which is so secret I can't find it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. We'll do some experimenting here. I need to pick out another color. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to mix another color here. This is a pre-made mixture Oops. that I already made and I want to see how it compares to these paints. These ones, as, as fun as they are, I don't think they're going to work out for this kit. I'm not really sure where those even so let's try mixing a mid-tone now. And so mainly what I'm talking about here, and so what I, what I typically do um, when I'm designing color schemes is I mix like the base color that I'm gonna spray on the kit and then I find out roughly what the mid-tones and the dark tones are. And so when we're looking at this painting reference here, let me make it a little bigger if I can. You can see that she has those shadings on the cream areas and so there's those darker colors that I've eyedroppered those are what I want to be mixing or just spraying on as clears and so it just kind of depends what it ends up being but I do try to mix those as well ahead of time and then whether I use them or not is kind of like in the moment so I have a pre-made mixture I'm gonna work on and see goes it was some white a little bit of white um, a really nice alternative and like a cool tone for hair or for clothing is this mr. color 318 Radome, Radome. Um, this one is really nice for hair tones like saber blondes or like sandy blondes and then you can mix it really well. So I like using this a lot more lately. Okay, so we're gonna need five drops of the Radome. Okay. And lastly, have a mahogany which is a darker color this is mr. color 42 mahogany and so this one um, 
is a dark brown, you can see. But it's a good mixer. Let's see. I might use that color for Abby. Yeah, I think I actually did, I used that for my Abby, um, one of the ones that I painted. And so I, I recommend it for her. I mixed it, I think, with one or two other things, but um, it was nice. Okay. My paint's getting all over everything. So let's mix this up. Try to see what this ended up being. Kind of a sandy gray, silk gray. So you can see it's kind of dark in there, but it will spray on pretty white, so. I might add something else too, let's see. Oh, this one is Instructional. A lot of what I do is just mixing stuff together, and then if it works, it works. <laughs> oh, you want me to check my book for Abby? I can do that real quick. Let's see. She was somewhere. Yeah, I used a lot of the Radome, and then I actually used a tiny bit of clear orange in it as well with that Radome mixture. Um, and, and some white in there as well. Just because uh, the radon by itself is a little bit too yellow, and so adding that clear orange gives it a little bit of that depth that needed. But I have a note there that says, be careful, becomes saturated. So <laughs> do that with what you will. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna add a tiny drop of clear brown here and see what that does. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay. So that changed it from kind of a grayish dull tone and added a bit of vibrance in it. So you can see now, it's a little bit more vibrant. Again, hard to tell with the shadow there. Um, and then let's see, I'm gonna drop the brown. Okay. So let's spray this and see what we're looking at, if it's even remotely in the area. It might be too brown, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I wonder how similar this is to the other mixture, because it looks kind of the same. <laughs> There are many ways to get to the same color. Don't need to fully saturate it. This one's a little bit less bright than the other mixture, I think. Oh, that's pretty nice though. Let's see. Still a little bit too dark, but let's see. We'll have to go really light on it, so I might lighten up this color a lot if I'm going to use it as a shader. That's pretty nice though, it's very vibrant, um, it kind of matches the scheme I'm going for. 
So I'm going to keep this mixture as a reference and say that these are for the base tone of the white parts of this figure. Sorry, I'm thinking. Uh, let's see, white parts. When I say white parts, but it's really not, as you can see, there's, I mean, we literally sprayed this like yellow and orange. So I'll show this in just a second. I'm just gonna clean this airbrush a little bit more. I think for now I'm gonna stick with that. Really what I wanted was kind of an orangey cream, um, nothing too desaturated or grayish, because I want this to be a pretty bright. Um, and this one definitely works for that, so. Really hard to tell. You can see the shadings on the edge here though, and that's what we're going for. So I think we'll stick with that for now and move on to working with some greens and see how those compare. A lot of times I get these colors down and then, you know, I realize, oh, I actually don't like how this goes with this one. And so um, it just kind of, it's play it by ear. So I have this other color here. Um, I actually bought this one new. It's a Mr. Color 64. It is yellow green. And so I have no idea how this is going to spray. This is a totally new one for me. Um, I was hoping I would be able to use it as a yellow green, but um, when I eyedroppered a lot of these colors, it, in actuality, they, they're more olive toned. And so I think we'll be mostly mixing yellows and then maybe adding a dash of green and then actually some black or gray to try to um, make them more olive toned. But we'll see. So I'm going to spray this um, just straight out of the bottle, see how it looks, and kind of go from there. I also have a few other ones. I have Mr. Color 66, which is just bright green, and then this fluo green here. Um, I don't think we'll need the fluo. I just brought it over here just because, but I think we're mostly going to be sticking to yellows and then go from there. Mr. Color um, tends to spray a lot better if it has its dedicated hobby thinner and so I'll be thinning some of these with um, Mr. Color leveling thinner. This is what I use when um, I'm spraying Mr. Color. I, I don't use all of it, I just kind of mix it in there with some other lacquer I have. Okay. This is, oh, this is pretty nice out of the bottle. Okay, so this is a pretty um, saturated color. Let me grab a little bit more thinner. Highly saturated, a little less yellow than I thought, but compared to the other colors in their line, um, it, it has more yellow in it. I think this would potentially work really well as her dress color because that color is a little bit darker than her hair color. Um, so let's spray it and see. That would be great if we could just like spray this with a slight alteration out of the bottle uh, rather than mix a ton of colors together. Let's see, grab a spoon, turn this on, do that, let's go. Oh, oh, this is really nice. need to fully saturate that spoon um yeah this one is really nice you guys right out of the bottle oh i'm sorry canon i missed your comment um leveling thinner is better for metallics yeah it works really well for metallics um you know i still kind of cut everything with regular hardware store lacquer just because i like to save money but um you know when you're spraying metallics they can go on kind of like flaky so you want to make sure they have enough thinner um, and the leveling stuff to, to allow them to settle. So I would say probably that that's better. 
Anyway, back to the green. Um, this is a really lovely color. Right out of the bottle, um, there's no you know, adjustment to the tint or shade or anything. Um, it is definitely yellow green in person. And let me kind of look at this next to the figure I have. Yeah, I think this would work really well um, for the dress of the figure, potentially the hair as well. So what I'm gonna do um, is use this yellow green and I'm gonna mix some yellow in it and see kind of where we go. It looks like the dress is a little bit um, paler and so I'm gonna add a bit of a touch of white in there as well probably not a lot and we'll just kind of play the colors um, see how it mixes just because I'm not entirely sure yet but so far I like it I think I'll stick with that and that will make our lives a lot easier because that way we don't have to mix a green from scratch um, greens and purples and oranges all the secondary colors you can mix them, but I typically find buying bottle colors are, are much easier because that way you're already dealing with like a high quality pigment of that specific color, right? Um, and you can like get close to the shade that you want by mixing that. And so over time, I've kind of expanded my um, paint arsenal to include these types of things and it just makes the mixing a little easier. Okay, so I'm gonna do half dropper of the green. And then let's just kind of mess around a bit. Let's see. I have a Mr. Color 035. So this is primary color yellow. Um, I'm This color, hmm, there's two different ones I have here and these spray on very differently. So I have 035, which is the primary color yellow and 005 Sunshine Yellow. This is much closer to being in that magenta cyan yellow color scheme, whereas this is like an opaque, well, not visible here, it's kind of all mixed up. It's an opaque, really, really bright yellow. Um, and this one is, is closer to a marigold. So you can see it's, it's much darker. Um, and so what we're going for here, I think the Sunshine Yellow will work a little bit better. So I'm gonna try that first. Typically when I wanted a kind of a darker color, that's when I go for the, um, the 035. Okay, so you can see it's very bright out of the bottle. Let's just add one drop of this and see kind of where that goes. And I should be writing this down. So half dropper, six four, one drop. 005. Let me do another one. Okay. It will hopefully become obvious once we spray a spoon the difference in these colors. I have to grab some more toothpicks. It's kind of aid in the mixing. Do one more drop. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, that looks like it's getting somewhere. Okay, so let's see. This would be three drops. All right, so let's spray this one and see what that color looks like and how it compares to this one. Should be more yellow toned, obviously, because we added more yellow to it. shaking it. I'm sorry. I'll move my my thing. <laughs> Try to be mindful of it. 
Um, so here's the difference, and you can see it pretty much immediately. This one here just has a little bit of yellow in it, but it completely changes the color. There's a, a little bit more of a comparison. So this is much closer to lime. Um, this actually is really close to the hair shade that I want. So let's see. I think there will need to be some adjustments. Oh, hello, Rocket. I'm gonna add a bit more yellow and see. Technically the palette is like a little bit skewed now because we already sprayed some color, but it's fine. Let's add two more. Move my compressor and hopefully that will be fine. Let's see, these look pretty identical to the ones you got from Vallejo, a little darker. Yeah, I think what I'll have to do is cut it a bit with some white, um, but for now we're just like double checking to make sure. And actually the colors on here are pretty bold that she has in her hair, so. Oh, I guess it would help if I, there we go. Okay, let me know if it's too loud. Um, now I think before the compressor was hitting the mic, Stand, so hopefully it's okay. Hopefully that sounded okay, Canon, or anyone else who's still sticking around. I think more yellow is the way to go here, for sure. Um, oh, this is really close. Okay, I'm gonna mark this one. Um, this is pretty much one of the main colors I want her hair to be, and so we want like a lot of yellow and a little bit of the limey green. So. Looking through this, yeah, this is excellent. So that was um, some hair base, half dropper of the 64 color and five drops of sunshine yellow. To make a really nice gradient too. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm glad that. Excuse me. It's all right. Hmm. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is mix a little bit of a darker tone for this hair and that should um, serve as the shading and we'll see what happens okay but in order to do that I think okay we'll, we'll figure it out I'm gonna mess around a little bit I can probably throw this one away yeah so far these things might add a little bit more yellow in that cream mixture. Okay. So we have these two lovely colors. And I'm gonna need to pull out more droppers soon. So now we're gonna mix kind of a shading color for that hair. And to do that, I'm gonna mix that color again. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of black and see if that takes me down to an olive tone. Usually I don't recommend adding in black in your paint mixtures just because um, it kind of tones down everything, but in the case of mixing yellow, 
with black, it turns the color into olive. And so for that purpose, um, it's what we want. That should be the color that we mixed before. My recording is accurate. So I can use a toothpick to just kind of mix. Okay, and I'm gonna use some black now. Um, I have this Mr. Color GX2. It's literally just a gloss black. It's called Ueno Black. Any black will work. Um, this is just one that I bought because I needed black and it come, came in a larger bottle. And I didn't have access to the giant guy in black at the time. So I'm gonna use only a toothpick drop. Let's see what happens. That did kind of nothing. Two, so three. Okay, yep, that did it, so let's see. Um, three, three, drop, black. That might even have been too much black. You might have to dial it back a notch, but you can see it really turns these colors dark really quickly. So it looks more like an olive tone. Um, it's a lot less saturated. It's just a deeper color. So we'll spray that and see what it looks like, because why not? I think that would be too dark for the hair, but worth trying. Oh, not too bad. Very olive. May not look olive on the screen, but it definitely is. See, I'm basically just saturating the spoon. It's a little too dark, I think, for what I want. And I'm not even worrying about making sure it's an even coat on these. To be honest, like we're just messing around, so for now I don't care. But I'll have to clean this out later. It's starting to get busy. Actually, oh, actually, you know, at the end tips, that's pretty close to what I want. So, I think what I'm gonna do is try that again, but with less black, and I'm gonna add one more color to it to bring the vibrance up a little bit. So, set that aside here. Try it one more time. So we're gonna mix our yellow and our green, add a dash of black, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more of a special-ish yellow to see if that brings the vibrance back up because it really desaturates when you add that black. I have so many little stuff here and they're all getting stuck. Let me clean up my desk real quick. Alright. Four, two, three. Um, let's see. Have I used recipes that use percentages? Like 16 yellow, 40 blue? Um, not particularly. I look at them occasionally if I'm feeling especially lost about a color. Um, I find that when you're mixing colors, sometimes like things that say use blue, um, there's a lot of variations of blue. And sometimes when they say blue, they even mean like use cyan. And so, um, no, <laughs> I don't use them all the time. I think they're a helpful guide, but I don't think that there's something that um, you have to, follow to a T. Okay. So we got that. Let me do two drop. One, 
too. That was a big drop though, so I'm that's skeptical. Okay, mix it again and compare it to the previous one and that will tell us if it's darker or not. It already looks brighter, so I think, yeah, we're, I think we're good for that. Okay, what I'm gonna do, um, I have these special colors. They're not really that special, but basically they're like the cyan, magenta, yellow version of Mr. Color. Um, and so I use these now occasionally when I want to bring a color back up or very, very slightly adjust the color. Um, these paints are a little bit advanced, if I'm gonna be honest, and so you really have to have a knowledge of how like introducing cyan or magenta into a color will change it. Um, but I do recommend them because cyan, magenta, and yellow, like if you have those three colors, you can mix any color in the rainbow, you know? That they're very different um, compared to just mixing like red, blue, and yellow. So um, I have been using these here and there. You don't need a lot to make adjustments and so um, I try to use them sparingly. I don't have very much of these colors, so. I'm gonna order those from USA Gundam Store. Yeah, they, these ones are worth it, I think. Um, but again, they are a little bit, a little bit more advanced. I'm just writing down this mixture real quick. I found that the cyan in particular is really helpful if you're trying to get teal mixtures um, because it, in, if you're not buying the right colors, it's kind of hard to get teal. Um, but the cyan makes it really easy to introduce some teal. Okay, let me clean this out real quick because there's been a lot of spraying and... This cup is pretty messy. Let's see, CMYK is bringing you back to your printing days. Because <laughs> it's accurate. That's like, yeah, it's the way to go. Um, especially when it concerns these. But yeah, it, you gotta be mindful. Okay, let's try this one. I think we're getting really close, so. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's the color I want. So let me um, kind of highlight the edges here and see if it blends well. But I, that is pretty much exactly in the range that I want for the shadings for this kit. Um, and even part of, you know, her hair. So you can see there's quite a, a big difference here between these two. Colors um, are much more yellow and olivey in real life. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So let me add a tiny bit more of this and kind of shade the edges of the spoon. I like to do that. Oh, something's funky. Yep, I like that color. Sorry, I had to double check. So what we ended up doing, um, just to kind of recap, is we introduced half of a dropper of the Mr. Color 64 Yellow Green. We then followed up with a few drops of the Gaia Notes 005 Sunshine Yellow, 
I added just barely two tiny drops of black to turn this into more of an olive tone. Um, and then I added one drop of the kind of cyan -y magenta yellow um, from Mr. Color. And so really in the end, um, we ended up with, you know, kind of a limey, olive -y color that's still pretty vibrant. Um, the shadings are a little bit deeper. I think you guys can see them. You can see along the edges here. Um, and so we want those shadings to be noticeable, but, but we don't want them to be like so far out there that the colors don't mix well. And so um, you can get this kind of effect with opaque colors or even clear colors if you're mixing them. Typically, um, I use, I kind of varies on the project. Sometimes I use clear colors to do my shading. Sometimes I use opaque. Lately, I've been kind of mixing some of my opaque colors with clear. So you can just buy like clear gloss um, and this will kind of cut some of those paints and make those opaques spray closer to clear. They're not like entirely clear paints, but they help in diffusing the pigments and making it so you don't get like a ton of paint splatters. So um, I found that has been a little bit helpful. What I think I might do actually for this um, is go over this with a, a fluo yellow and you know, I might as well just do that now to see how it looks on this spoon, just, just in case. Um, and that will also bring up some vibrancy in the color. So, let me grab that. Whoops, it like hit my stand. That's close enough, okay. So I'm gonna spray this really quick. Um, this is just Gaia Notes. 105 fluo yellow. I'm not even gonna put this in a cup. I'm just gonna like put a little bit of thinner in my uh, Airbrush and then go from there But I think that's pretty good on the hair at least it's pretty close to what I want and so then we can um, Adjust it on the day of if needed and what I'll do when we're pa painting um, is Sorry, one second, got something. Okay, what I'll do when I'm painting um, is prepare the paints beforehand. And so then that way we have, uh, you know, we're not mixing colors on the day of and we'll have enough paint too. Okay, so let's add a little fluo. A really tiny bit and I'll try to show you guys it in my cup what it looks like but this might be a little hard I don't know if you can see that can you see how blue it is it looks kind of bright yellowy it sprays out pretty bright so just wanted to bring some brightness to the kit I'm just curious how this will look, so. Oh yeah, okay. I wonder how it would look on this. too much um, but it did make this color on the spoon a little bit brighter so I think I might end up doing that yeah that looks pretty nice so I'll just say make a note to possibly add fluo yellow at the end as kind of a top coat um, let's see add fluo yellow one thing um, that I do kind of do sometimes um, and I probably won't do it for this kit is add a pearl uh, layer on top of the hair to make it kind of shiny and glossy. This kit, I don't feel like there's a need to do that, and so um, I will not be doing it, but just be aware that there's many ways that you can add some flair to your kit by introducing pearls. I've done that on numerous occasions at this point, but this one does not feel like this kit needs pearls, so. Okay, 
So I'm pretty happy with this spoon um, for the hair color. So let's move on. And let me look here. It's starting to come together actually. Thought that cream wouldn't work well, but it actually quite does. So. some of these away. Keep this down actually. Probably return to this now. So we have this kind of yellowy olive bright color for her hair. So we want to get a little bit darker um, in terms of green for her outfit because let's see as you can see here if I can stop locking this image she has this really like kind of yellowy hair that's supposed to represent the underbelly and kind of the under the beak part. Oh, I see. The beak's just changed. Um, I lost my train of thought. One second. Let me pick another. see here um, the hair of color of the kit is similar to the underbelly of kind of under the beak of that bird um, but what we want to do now is paint her clothing which is a little bit of a darker green and it kind of represents the back feathers and, and kind of the wings of the bird so at least that's what Whoopi intended um, I like that idea we don't have to get close to the actual bird colors because those are quite a bit deeper and darker in color um, but we do want to make sure that there's a differentiation in the hair color um, compared to the dress color I think it would be nice so let's make that a little bit smaller again hopefully it looks similar to me it looks okay on my screen so that hair is a little bit more yellow so what we'll have to do is introduce more yellow I think but that's fine okay so let's work with the dress again and what I will do is leave the screen and let's work with some tiny bit of yellow and some more black to bring that down to a more of a greeny olive color. I've got a lot of colors going on here. And a lot of droppers. So let's mix some more green. We'll do half a dropper of this again. So let's see, oh, dress. Half dropper, 60, 64. Okay, let's do one drop of the yellow. And remember, we used five drops for that hair, so we want less yellow than before. Mix that up. And let's introduce some black. One drop at first. already pretty nice so I'm actually gonna spray that and see one drop yellow one two drop black pretty bright. Not dark enough though. 
Okay. So, uh, let's double the amount of that light green. So add another half dropper for a total of one drop of light green. And I'm going to throw in a tiny bit of this bright green. So this is guy or Mr. Color 66. See what happens when I introduce this color. I'm not sure how this will go. It might backfire. This is a very, very bright foresty green, as you can see here. And I don't think we need a lot of this, so I'm gonna actually use a toothpick drop of this. See what happens. Much more intense. Let's mix this or spray this one and see how that looks. You can see the color is laying on pretty uneven here because I'm just kind of spraying some close, spraying some far away. Obviously when you're painting you want equal coverage and you don't want to be saturating any one area too quickly because then that's going to lead to some issues in how your paint looks. This one is fine so far but I'm really underestimating how all of the, these colors are. So here's kind of where we were and what I mixed two already. So that's with that darker, more of the color of the green and then a little bit more. So let me add some more black to this. And this is why um, you start to write this stuff down because it can get complicated real quickly when you need to make adjustments. And it's very easy to forget what you've added. So if I hadn't known I'd already added black and some other random stuff, I would have already forgotten it by now. Okay, so I'm gonna add another two drops of this black. That actually already looks better. Again, we have been spraying, so our mixture is a little bit altered already, but it can go from there. Um, I do just want to say as kind of an advisory, when you're spraying, please have your airbrush booth on. Like I'm only doing this because we're just kind of spraying colors really quickly and then shifting stuff and mixing stuff around. But when I'm mixing colors, um, I always have my booth on. It's just kind of inconvenient to like turn this on and off and on and off for the full two hours because then you guys wouldn't be able to hear me half the time. So just FYI. This color is actually really good though. Um, I'm kind of taking a few drops on the image right now and it's pretty close. And you can see there's a very big difference here in the colors. This is the hair proposed color. This was the um, color of the dress that was proposed. And this is a little bit too dark for my liking, but I think this would work really great as a shader. And so um, what I'm gonna do is kind of 
work up a little bit and try not to get this as dark. And then we'll use that color as the base, if that makes sense. Let's see. Oh, but now it's all on stream, so you can go back and watch the vlog. That's very true. I have to watch my own work to <laughs> remember my paint recipes. I'm, I realize I probably missed that comment a long time ago. Sorry. I ended up having to turn off the Twitch on my phone because I'm just looking at the image of this figure. Um, but I am turning around regularly, so. Okay, so I'm going to keep this mixture in mind because um, this, again, is pretty close to a good shader color. So let me say shader. And now that we know that, we can kind of um, work up or work backwards and not add as much, you know, yellow or black or whatever. And kind of go from there. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna set this one right here. As, oops, hopefully it didn't spill. Yeah, that's our shader, so. Keep that in mind. So let's mix the base for the dress. Sometimes that happens. You end up with the shading color that you like first. Okay, so we'll choose one dropper of this light green color. I'm very glad I bought this. Okay, and we had one tiny drop of this bright, bright green. It's quite literally bright green. That's the name. Whoops, well. I got it and it got on the edge. You can see there. So let's see if I can kind of scrape that in. And we also had some yellow. Yellow. Just one drop of yellow. And I'm having a hard time believing that this color ended up being from one drop of the black so I think it was a dilution issue so I'll just keep that in mind so let's add one drop and see how that compares yeah that basically didn't change it like at all I'm not sure if you guys can see the difference in the colors here this one is quite like two or three shades darker so I think um, in the shading, we'll just have to mix more black into it. So let me spray this one. Because if this works, this can serve as our base for the dress. back it up a little bit that seems to usually when you you know pull your airbrush farther back you can get a more even coverage a little more it's already a lot less yellow you know compared to the hair which we did want okay just really really quickly I'm gonna look at this and then add the shader pretty dang close. Definitely still a difference. Oh, I like the difference there. So I like having the hair more yellow and olive-y. Let me add the shading onto this and see how it looks.
Okay. I really like that. I think that looks nice. Um, let's compare it. So here are kind of the two comparisons along with the cream. And you can see so far we have a pretty cohesive palette here. Um, it's kind of going from yellow into to those darker green. Um, and I, I like that. I can kind of imagine the, the hair being that. Um, what I might do is actually kind of borrow a little bit of this color and use that on the tips of her hair. And so it will go from like a yellow hair down into this green dress. Um, and that way it kind of all blends together. So I think I'm gonna stick with that for now. Um, we'll revisit that obviously once we mix these colors into bottles. Um, so let's see, we have that. And this will be our base. And then two shade. Wanted to add a little bit more black. Add more black. And I'm gonna keep this spoon here on the side. Yeah, I like that. Feels limey. Okay. So let's do an airbrush cleanup. And we have half an hour left, so I think we can still mess around with some stuff. Whether or not we find a color that matches is up for debate. But we can mess around with some oranges um, and kind of see, you know, what's happening with that. The orange is going to be relatively easy to mix because again, I'm going to use that Dispay orange and that one is very bright out of the bottle. It also mixes very well. So that's another plus. Okay, so I don't know what to do with some of these. Let's look at um, the oranges, and I have a variety of oranges. Actually, let me put these here while we're talking. So those are kind of some of the colors we're working on. Um, so let's see. There's my reference. So you can see there's a lot of oranges here. Um, I've kind of sampled all over the palette, and mostly because you can see her hair her little hair bands there, those are a darker orange than the lining on her um, dress there. And so we should consider that. She also has these little orange slices that are kind of on the sides of her dress, um, or the sleeves, you can't really see them easily right there, but they exist. And so let's kind of focus on mixing a color that would work well as the liner for that kind of china dress part in the front there and see where that takes us. Maybe we mix this here. Oops, I lost it again. Okay. That looks really nice on the screen. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Okay, so let me see. Unlike the other ones, or I guess kind of like the other ones, um, this orange on the edge of her dress here, it, it has some pastel in it. I can already see that. Um, let me look up this color real quick and so I can get a basic idea. Let's see. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just a bright orange. It has a little bit of. Oh, it looks pretty white to me. So. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that Dispay orange and cut it with white first and see what happens and kind of go from there. I might need to alter the yellowness of it, might need to make it more red, I'm not really sure yet. So we'll take the regular bit. Um, I will be using Dispay orange. And so this is a very high intensity orange color. This is basically non-mixable if you tried to mix this from other colors you wouldn't be able to get it to this um, vibrance and so that's one of the reasons why I chose it is I wanted a really nice orange that I could mix easily with other things and make them more intense. So we'll be using that and then we'll be using my very favorite white color. 
color, just white, to make sure everything goes well. Um, let's start out with half a dropper of white, and I'm gonna barely add any of the display and see kind of where it, where it goes. I think the display it's it's a very like pumpkin deep orange, and it looks like I might need to add a little bit of yellow to kind of balance this. So we'll see. You can see the color is crazy out of the bottle. It's very high intensity carrot orange. I know I keep saying high intensity, but to me it's like, whoa. The colors don't match at all when I'm looking at on my phone and then that one. So we'll add one drop, or one drop of this. You can already see it's super bright, but very red. It's, it's more on the red orange color scheme than it is the yellow. So. What I will do instead, I think, let me make some notes here. One drop of white. One drop of this, this bay. Let's add some yellow. And I'm going to go with the primary color yellow. This is the Guy Notes 035. Can get the lid off. These Guy Notes lids get pretty stuck. A very also intense color and very marigold this is complete opposite of that sunshine so here's the comparison so this is that sunshine yellow and this is the primary color yellow so completely different there um, I think maybe just one toothpick drop of that we'll start too these are really really dark colors. Changed it. It's very much now like a peachy yellow. Still not really what I want though. Maybe I should have added the other one. Add another drop of this. We're now firmly in like light yellow kind of orange territory, but still not where I want to be. So what I'll do now maybe is add a clear orange. Let's see. Just kind of messing around here to see. That was pretty big drop there. Might need to start over. I don't think that display might be what I'm looking for here. I didn't realize how kind of yellow this tone was at first. Let's mix this up. We can spray this though and see how it goes on. Just out of curiosity. Because it is a nice color. Yeah, I think I'll spray this and see how it looks. Um, and that way we can see what went wrong. That's another helpful way to figure out your paint mixtures. Oh. Actually not as bad as I thought. not bad. It, I don't know if it's what I'm looking for. Oh, hi, kitten. Did you guys hear my cat? What's wrong, boo? Are you sassy? 
You want to say hi? Oh boy. <laughs> He's like coming over and I have a setup. What's wrong, Rocket? Oh, making biscuits now. He's like, why are you in my area doing these things? I think we're on the right track here. The color needs to be a little bit more intense, so I think let's remix this, but only use half a dropper of white. Because what, what's happening right now is um, this color is it looks like it's getting there but it's a little bit too pastel and I think that's because we added too much white so let's compare it with half a dropper of white and see um, I see I hear cute meows yeah that's rocket he he's usually not that vocal when I'm streaming um, maybe you want some attention or something but ain't gonna get it you guys are who have my attention right now Oops. All right, so we're gonna remix this orange, uh, but instead of using one dropper of white, we're gonna use half a dropper. Oftentimes that's enough to completely, you know, change it. So this is a different bottle, question mark. I have two bottles of white here. One is like one that I've been trying to get rid of for a while, and the other one is just my new bottle. Okay, so this half the amount of white, but same deal. We're gonna add the the display. And two drops of. I think this was the teaspoon drop, right? It's a toothpick drop. Oh my god, what the? Rocket, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Rocket is now playing. He found the ball that is in his little toy. He never uses that ball, so that's pretty funny. Okay, and then we had one drop of clear. Oops, this is very uh, condensed. Probably need to thin this out, but for our purposes, there we go. Okay. Yeah, have a good one, Rebel Star. Thank you for tuning in for sure. Hopefully, this was somewhat interesting. Just two hours of me messing around with color. This already looks crazy um, intense compared to the other one. And I'll put these side by side. Okay. Can you guys see? The no, definitely not. <laughs> I can't even tell the difference in the the screen. Let me spray this um, and then we'll look at the spoons. Yeah, Rocket, what do you want? Oh boy. All right, let me dump this and then clean this. And we will compare. All right, so can you tell the difference? It's somewhat subtle. In person, it's a lot more noticeable. The one on the left here though has half a dropper more of white 
and it definitely makes a difference in the intensity of the colors. So this one here is a lot um, richer, it's more vibrant. Here it's a little more pastel-y. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and this is more for my painting style, is I do tend to introduce a lot of white um, and kind of pastel colors into my kits just because I like those softer colors and I like having it not like crazy bold in your face. And so this is more of something that I do that's a painting style. Um, if we had removed the white entirely, we would have definitely ended up with an even more intense color. Um, but again, I, I tend to prefer those pastels and those softer tones in my kits. So that's why I typically add a lot of white and I buy a lot of white. So let me look at this. That actually is very close to what I want as well. Somehow it just seems like it's fine. So here. So when I look at it here though, I'm not quite as happy. And I think that's just possibly because I don't have shading on this, um, but it seems like I could use a bit more yellow in this orange because a lot of these colors are pretty yellow based. So let me take these here. I'm gonna throw this one away because I don't need that pastel anymore. But we are working with this color. And I think one of the last things I'm gonna do, I don't wanna dump this, but I wanna, I wanna remix this because I wanna add a little bit of yellow in it and see, uh, the, add the sunshine yellow. So I'll just mix a new batch. A lot of remixing here, but it is what it is. Let me get some more thinner. So I really want to have this kit be a lot of yellows. And so right now there's not a lot of yellow that I feel is in this orange color. And so I want to make it even more yellowy. So let's see, luckily, Luckily, we have our mixture, so alter that. We have the half dropper of the white. Again, I try to reuse these droppers as much as I can, but yeah, it's kind of gunked up. Okay, so we're gonna mix this orange one more time using the recipe and then add more yellow. Okay, that one. Next is this one. So it's not a lot, so. Gunky. Okay, and now we have that. It should end up being roughly similar if I mixed it correctly. Why is this one so different than this one? This one's like so much darker now. This happens sometimes. I feel like the mixture is usually my fault. Maybe I didn't add enough of the And that's a sign that is worth investigating because every time that you make your paint or you mix it, it should end up the same. But what I'm looking at here are two totally different vibrancies. And I'm not sure why that happened. <laughs> and I don't know if it's visible, but you can see the color here on the left is a lot more intense. And that's what we sprayed here and it matches up here, but this one doesn't, so. Hmm. I guess I can just try mixing it again and 
see what happens. Looks very odd. There's kind of a lot of a weird mixture going here, so. Okay, I'm gonna throw these away. Let's start fresh. And we'll do this one more time. And hopefully it goes well, because I think that's all that we have time for tonight. Okay, so you had one drop of this. of the white. Remember that very clearly. Okay. Then we had one small drop of the clear orange. Oh, you know what might have happened? So I have two paints here side by side that look almost identical. I have clear brown and clear orange. And I think what I did is I picked up the clear brown instead of the clear orange. And so, yeah, I think that's what happened. So. Good things to keep in mind. I actually had that issue um, the other day and I picked up, I wanted a clear purple and I picked up a primary color purple instead. And I don't know anybody who's, if you guys have worked with those colors, but the primary color purple is way more uh, intense than the clear purple. And so I ended up with these like really crazy colors and I was like, why is this happening? And it was all because uh, I picked up the wrong color. Oh yeah, this is, <laughs> so this is exactly, or at least very close to what I had before. Um, it seems that I had just mistakenly picked up the clear brown instead. So, tiny things that affect your paint flow and your workflow, but they are important to keep in mind. So, anyway, uh, what we'll do now instead is add a little bit more of the sunshine yellow. Oops. I'm gonna add two drops, tiny toothpick drops of that and see how it affects it. Spray that on real quick and compare the two. That sunshine yellow really lightens this tone up, makes it more pumpkin-y. Totally different. You can see this one is much more yellow. Um, this is actually probably closer to like a dark marigold um, than this one here, but they are both in the orange range and they're both mostly pastel in person. Colors are pretty saturated on my screen, but there you can see the yellow tones here. So let's look at them here. Oh, that's much better. So I don't know. Can you guys tell the difference here? And see how the yellow here kind of matches a little bit better. So we've got this one, we got this one, cream, and this is the orange. And then when we compare it to this orange, you can see how much darker that one is comparatively. And so really we want something that's gonna go well here. And you can tell, hopefully. <laughs> it's like a ripened mango. Oh yeah, mango is a good comparison. Let me look up a mango now and then see. Cause now I'm just hungry. Yeah, it is. It's much closer to a mango -y kind of orange color. Um, that's a very good comparison, actually. Ooh, mango is delicious. Actually, 
mango. It's like very nice color scheme, right? Because it's got this nice red and then it turns yellow and then it's green. Delicious orange on the inside. Oh boy. All right. So let me um, make a note here just of these paints. And this would be mostly the outline, I think, of the um, dress area. So dress outline. I'm not 100% sold on having this be the kind of orange colors that are on her sleeves. Um, but what I could do is have more of a yellow kind of color and then use this as the shading. So we can do a variety of things and kind of get these colors together. This color actually could be shading this one as well. Um, but there's other ways we can shade this. I'll probably use clears to shade that, if anything. Um, okay. So I think we're almost at a point where it wouldn't make much sense to mix more colors. So let me bring back the image and we can kind of do a quick wrap up. So uh, we at this point have mixed most of the colors for the hair. I might do some slight adjustments. We also did most of the dress colors, um, not too much needed for those. Might, add, might introduce some more clears or some deeper greens to kind of give it a bit more depth, but that will all happen when we're painting the figure and as I'm wrapping up colors. We've also looked at one of the oranges. Oh, we finished the belly color. So we, we figured out mostly the kind of cream that we wanted for um, the most of those whitish parts. And we've also worked on the orange lining of her outfit. And so what we have left to do and what we will continue on Thursday um, are those deeper oranges and the frills colors, which are kind of a darker um, gray, but it, it's actually more of a purple gray and there, there's probably a reason for that um, because green and orange and purple are all secondary colors so these are all going to work really well together so we'll be mixing some kind of grays with some purple and maybe pinkish tones in them um, we also have her lighter stockings that we need to finish and again those have some pink in them so I actually brought out some pink uh, that we didn't get to so there are a couple of pink tones in this that I wanted to work on, but we didn't have a chance. So we'll do that. Um, and we also got tiny bits like uh, those cherry petal blossoms and some yellow accents on her dress. And so we'll just kind of mess around and see how things go for that. Um, we got pretty far today, if I'm going to be honest. So I don't think we'll need to do too much more. Um, in terms of the color scheme generation, I think Thursday for sure, maybe Tuesday, but I think it will depend on a lot of things. And I also have a presentation due next week, and so we'll again see how that goes. Um, but anyway, I think that's where I'm going to cut it off. Uh, as you can see, a lot done here. Very happy with these so far. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this experience so far. It's always interesting when we're mixing colors because I feel like it's a lot of trial and error and I'm not sure if my approach here works best for people. So if you have any suggestions or things you want me to try to improve on or explain better, please let me know um, and I will do my best to try to answer or accommodate those things. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys all have a good uh, end of tonight or a good morning wherever you're at and I will see you next Thursday or this coming Thursday at the 3rd February 3rd okay, same time 8 p.m. thank you again for tuning in and yeah have a good one you guys thanks so much for stopping by see you later